Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Cub and welcome to the second episode of our Sky Factory 3 Let's Play Adventure Extravaganza of Awesomeness and Fun Times. I hope that you've already watched episode 1 and that you are a returning viewer. If not, eh, you didn't miss much. We just did all of this that you see here. Uh, now the last episode was about 50 minutes long. It was probably one of the longer episodes I've done. It definitely was. Uh, so if you don't want to go back and rewatch that, some of you might not know this, but I did do a speed guide where I took that video, cut it down to just the 10 minutes of the most essential stuff. I've uploaded that and I will link to that maybe right now on the screen if I remember and hopefully I do, but also at the end via one of those nice little end cards. It'll be on there. You can watch it there. And I'm going to be doing the same in this episode because this is also going to be a longer episode. I've got a lot of things I want to cover, so we're going to be going at it for a while. That was came out not the way I had intended, but I'll also go ahead and do a speed episode after this one as well. For those of you who just don't have the time to spend, listen to me yammer on indefinitely. Completely understandable. Now, since the last episode, I've got quite a bit done. First off, I sifted a lot more cobblestone because we can just come over here and get like half a stack. Uh, very frequently. That thing is very quick. So I've got a chest here full of all of the different ore pieces that I've collected. And I've gone ahead and cooked up all of the iron ones. So we now have eight pieces of iron. So we're not doing too bad for iron. Although later in this episode, I'll be showing you how to double your output from the ore pieces. That's going to be really handy. Next up, we've got, I built a few more furnaces. They've just been cooking up random things. Been focusing on trying to get more mini charcoal. Uh, so 13 mini charcoal. That's 13 silkworms. Not the best food. But I've been hungry, so, you know, it works. Moving on from there, I think that this episode, we're going to start off with a bit of automation. And this is by no means an extensive form of automation. This is something that you can do very easily, very early game. We're just going to build ourselves chests. We're going to drop that down right here. And then we're going to build ourselves another chest. Uh, again, very easy. Nothing too difficult. You've probably built chests before. We're going to grab our iron. We've got eight pieces. Uh, we just earned an achievement, acquiring hardware. I'm not sure why. It's not the first time we've cooked up uh, iron before, but you know, I'm not here to question it either. There we go. We're going to get ourselves a hopper. So right now it looks like I was under the impression that this would hold an entire stack, but it looks like it maxes out at 32 pieces. So what we're going to do is just plop that down, making sure to aim it at the chest so it empties directly into the chest. And now it will keep producing cobblestone, and you can actually see the rate at which it produces it. So one every, what, two or three seconds? Not bad, and it'll just do that indefinitely in the background while we do other things. We don't even have to think about it, it's just happening. And the next thing we're going to do, it's a good thing we've got some additional iron because we're going to need it. I'm going to show you a couple of different tools that we can build to help with aesthetics. And the reason is I'm going to be doing quite a bit of building here in just a minute. We're going to have one of those beautiful Minecraft replay uh, mod enabled panning shots. I've got a lot of stuff to build before we get into all of the cool modded items I'm going to be showing you. So let's go ahead and take a look at those neat aesthetic things. Not necessary. I, this is very different than any other episode two I've done for any other Sky Factory series. And I like that. I like that this series is a little bit different than Sky Factory one and two and two and a half. This is, it's very different. The, the pack is different. I want this series to feel different as well. So the first thing we're going to look at and the thing that I'm going to be using uh, mostly is the builder's wand. Now, now, when you type in wand, there's a lot here. Your eye will probably be drawn to this one, the actual builder's wand from Extra Utilities 2. As you can see, it's a bit more on the expensive side. It's a gold ingot. It's magical wood, which is a bookshelf and gold, which is all of these different items. We're not going to be able to build that today, but we can build one of these more basic wands, including, I mean, we don't have any diamond, but an iron wand is very simple and a stone wand. Now, if you look over here, you'll see that the mode is horizontal. The fluid is stop, the max is five. Really, the only one we care about there is the max. So five blocks, that's the maximum amount of blocks a stone wand will place. Not before it breaks, but just in one go. Iron is up to nine. I think we're gonna go ahead with the iron wand. We definitely have the resources for it. I don't wanna use all of our iron up, kinda wanna hold on to some of it, but there we go, we've got our iron wand, and this works exactly like you think it would. If we put down a row of cobblestone, and then we just come over here. Look at that. We got a nice grid. Cool. And uh, it only works horizontally, unfortunately. As you can see there, it doesn't work vertically. Like, we can't build upward. But that's fine because I'm going to be mostly building it platforms with it. And now that we've placed all that down and I'm thinking about it, we might as well go ahead and grab our hammer. 
and turn all of that into gravel. Might be handy later. We're going to go ahead and put all of these items away, as well as the iron wand. We'll just set it up here. We don't need it right now. The other things we're going to show you are chisels, and there's actually two different ones in this pack. I'd also like to show you the saw. It's the only saw in the pack. Unfortunately, it does require two diamonds, so we're not there yet, but hopefully soon. So the two chisels I'm going to show you, we'll start off here with this one, and then they look similar, but that's just because of the texture pack that I'm using. If you'd like to know what it is, just watch the intro again. It's right there at the beginning. So this is the, this is my favorite chisel, and this one is the one we're going to be using to, uh, if you hold it, you right click it, it brings up this grid, and as you can see, any item you have, you can transform it into a different looking block. You can turn this into, look at that, a cobblestone big tile. It looks nice, it looks clean, looks better than cobblestone, and if I'm not mistaken, you can also use it, because we use a lot of slabs, I think you can also use it on slabs. No, you cannot. I am most definitely mistaken. What we could do is we could turn an entire block of wood, we could chisel a whole block of wood and then use the saw to cut it up into slabs, but again, we don't have two diamonds. Oh look, a description. Lovely. Uh, that's not going to help us though. The chisel I'm definitely going to use, it's, it's great, and you can use it on glowstone to make glowstone look a lot better, because glowstone is hideously ugly, but it does a lot of really cool stuff with glowstone. So that's the first chisel. The second one is a little bit different. Now, I've never played with the chisel in bits mod, which is where this particular saw comes from. I keep bringing up that saw. We'll cover it one day, I promise. But uh, it's a little bit different. I like it, though. It's pretty cool in what it does. So we'll get this one. And again, they do look similar. That's just the texture pack, I assume. I haven't seen it in vanilla. But what you can do with this one is if you hold it in your hand, you'll notice it highlights a little block. You just left click and you can chisel that block out of there. Look at that. So you can chisel out little individual blocks and you do collect them and you can put them back if you want to. So if you mess up and you decide you want to change it, you can put them back in there or you can put them off by themselves in the world. I'm not going to do that because they're a bit of a pain to pick back up, but that's actually really cool. If you hold down the left alt, so that's the alt key next to the uh, space bar. On Mac, I'm not sure what that would be, but you have your other options here. So we can go to large cube and we just take a big old chunk out of there. Check that out. And that gives us a ton of little bitty chisel cubes. I don't know how long it takes to put those back in there, to be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure how this mod works. I just noticed that this was a thing and thought, oh, that's pretty nifty. Let's go ahead and get rid of this block if we can. Oh my goodness, what great. It looks like we did get the whole, no, it's a chisel block. Well, unfortunately, I mean, as cool as these things are, they also take up a lot of space. I have no desire to hold on to a bunch of little chiseled pieces, so we're just going to throw them off the world. I was just a piece of cobblestone. But again, that is the left alt key to pick what you want to do with it. I think planes is the most useful, so what we could do... Hmm. Hmm. I was going to say, we could get an entire block of plank. Entire plank block? An entire piece of plank? What would you call this? We can set this up to plane, and then we can just take off a whole plane, and we can trim these down to whatever size we want it to. So the idea is here, and let me grab another piece of wood and actually demonstrate it now, because that was just proof of concept for me. But if I had, oh my gosh, look at all of these. See, this is, that's a bit of an issue. But the idea that I had was if I had the regular chisel, oh no, this is getting very messy. I could create, um, oak plank, right? And then if I wanted to turn that into a slab, I could do so like so. Doesn't look like it's gonna work though because I think our inventory is full. So let's get rid of some of this stuff. Ah, of course we do have the trash can right here. What? I did not even realize that that was a thing. So when we leave, is it all gonna be gone now? Yes, it is. Okay, that's really handy. Look at that, that's a bonus tip there for you. Just open up your uh, inventory, go to trash can, shift click items in there, and when you leave, they're gone. That's really useful. It doesn't look like we can actually chisel this though. I mean, it's coming Oh Nope. There it goes. So you could do this if you wanted to create slabs that way. I wouldn't recommend it though, because oh boy, does that leave just a whole bunch of, whole bunch of this stuff you got to deal with. Look at me already forgetting that this trash can exists. You know what? It was a fun experiment though. So I'm probably not going to be using this particular chisel very often. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But uh, maybe not today. I think I'm going to focus on the iron wand and the chisel. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a nap. 
and then when we come back, I'm going to start building. The first thing I'm going to build is right over there, a very large platform for spawning neutral mobs, as well as doing a bit of farming. Again, this does also have to be at least 24 blocks away from your spawn block, so I might actually do it. This spawn block seems to be the hub off of which we do everything, so I might do it off of this one and just go straight that way with it. But uh, that's going to be really useful, and then later we're going to do ore duplication. So without any further ado, let's hop to it after I take a nap. Alrighty, folks. Well, I gotta say, this did not go the way that I thought that it would. Many of you may have noticed I did build it a little bit off-center, but I fixed that. I also wasn't entirely sure how I was going to do any of this, but at the end of it, I just kind of winged it, and I gotta say, I'm happy with the way it turns out. I know some of you won't like it, but I like the way that these uh, fences rest on just one pillar on either corner. I like the fact that it's a little bit longer than it is wide. Uh, it's just, it, I don't like things to be square. I know that that sounds weird. Like, I'm fine with them being symmetrical, but square just drives me crazy. I like this. I think that this looks pretty good. We got a few steps we got to take now, though, to really get it ready for planting and harvesting crops. I was going to say harvesting animals, but I guess we're going to be doing that as well. First off, while you were sifting dirt, you should have come across a few of these right here. These are grass seeds, and they look just like the ugly little brown something or another. I'm not entirely. We won't elaborate any further, but it's grass seed. If you right click, puts down a piece of grass. We're going to put these around randomly. It doesn't really matter where in particular you put them because over time they will eventually spread and create more grass. So that's great. We're going to leave this area lit with the torches for now. Although, uh, some of y'all might have noticed at one point I accidentally chunked my chisel off the, uh, the side of the world. That was a mistake. That was not intentional, I promise you. The next thing I'm looking at building, though, is going to help us grow crops a little bit faster, and that's the watering can. Now, I haven't actually checked to see, but yes, it is, in fact, in the pack, and this just requires stone and a bowl. So, no, I mean, it looks, I mean, I realize it looks like it would be made of metal. I mean, it's even got the word can. I've never seen a can made of anything besides iron. But uh, look at this. This is going to be very straightforward. The other thing we're going to need is a couple of buckets because it's finally time to make an infinite water source. And guess what we have? Buckets. What we don't have, though, is a bowl. But that's just pieces of wood. So for some reason, I was thinking we would need clay today. But I'm not, I'm not sure what I was thinking about. Uh, in any case, this does require regular stone, which I used quite a bit of. We need to get some more... Here we go, mini charcoal throw that up here. I was using regular stone, like you see here, to build shears. These stone shears are a little bit better than the wooden ones, definitely cheaper, and I had to really take dirt production into over nebula. I was trying to think of a clever way of saying that. Overdrive would have made sense, but it didn't make sense because it's like a weird car reference, and we're talking about it doesn't matter, does it? So let's go ahead and we're going to grab the water right now. We're going to do this and get it done with before we even fill up the water and can't. Don't have to, but you know, this is just the way I've chosen to do things, and we're not going back now. Also, I'm sure many of you noticed I decided to go with stone over here because... Oh, look, the grass is already spreading. Goodness, that was fast. I decided to go with stone because, to be honest, I was just a, a little bit tired of wood. It burns really easily for some reason. Now, I've got to figure out where the center of this joint is, and I think it's right here. This looks to be the middle. Mm, maybe here? Maybe that's it? So, I guess, how am I going to design this? I haven't thought it through. I mean, to make it infinite, all we have to do is have the two buckets, and then, like, put one there, and then another one over here. No, not up there, over there. And then that middle block is infinite, and then now this one is two, but that's kind of weird looking. Alright, so now we now have our infinite source. We can get infinite water from right there. I like having the dirt kind of float above the cobblestone, but right here underneath this water it looks a bit silly so we'll go ahead and fill that in 
And there we go. We've got our infinite water source, which is good. We can use that for farming, and we're going to need it to spawn in monsters. Because the next thing we're going to build is going to be a lure, which is going to help us attract animals to this area. If you just type in, I think it's lure. It might be bait. Lore made sense at the time I said it. Bait's what it actually is, though. This is really cool. This is mob bait. I got suggested I do live streams where I test all the things I'm going to do for an episode. And when I was testing what I was going to do in episode two, uh, Talon Breck came in and said, hey, take a look at this bait. So all we need is a couple of pieces of wheat. Now, I don't have wheat right now, but what I do have is seeds, fortunately. Uh, we got quite a bit of those. So we'll go ahead and grab them. We'll come back up here, and ooh, you know what I forgot to do was fill up the watering can, so we'll do that while we're up here as well. And really, if you don't have a watering can, you're going to want to make one. It's going to speed this process up a lot. Just go to your water source, right, right click it. Looks like it's filling up with water. Just hold down the right click, I guess. This is new. Takes a while to fill it up, and I guess it probably runs empty over time as well. That's an interesting new mechanic. But uh, from there, you just right click, and as you can see... If you hold down the right click and just walk around, it speeds up the growth, the growth and the spread of grass, which is handy. Very handy indeed. It's basically like bone mill, but you, you don't actually have to have bone mill, and you can just kind of carry it around with you. Cool. I like the fact that it empties, though. It, it kind of helps balance the game out. Now, we only need a couple pieces of wheat, so we got to till the ground, of course. Obviously, this is very basic vanilla Minecraft stuff that when I start doing modded things, I just kind of forget. Don't, don't be cruel. Ooh, to a heart that's true. My heart is true to you guys. I'm doing my darndest here. Doing my darndest. All right, so we're going to till up a couple of pieces. We're going to plant a couple of seeds. And then we're just going to stand here and hold down on the watering can. So it's going to moisten the ground. And look at that growth. Look at that. We're already at 29% here. 29%. Which one's going to get grown first? Literally only time can tell. Although it kind of looks like maybe this one. Ah, there we go. All right, so we already got one piece. All we got to do is right-click on this one, and boom, there we go. We get the seed, we get the wheat, and it leaves the seeds planted and growing more, which is very, very handy. Now, I haven't figured out yet how I'm going to do this. I think we might have farming over here to either side and then animals in the back. I haven't really sectioned it off, though. I've got some extra acacia here, so I can kind of just mock it up a bit, but maybe a farm over there, a farm over there. We don't really need fencing to represent where the farming is going to go. And then, kind of, over... Ugh, that water source is a bit of a pain, isn't it? it maybe I need to build, like, a fountain or something. We'll, we'll figure it out later. For right now, though, I say we just put this right through the middle of it, and we'll have the animals on the other side. Yeah, you know, we'll work out the specifics later. For right now, we're going to take our two pieces of wheat, and there's some rules when using cow bait. First off, you don't have to use it. If you just give it time, eventually animals will spawn over here. But if we have the cow bait... We can place it down, make sure that it's in a nice dirt area and there's some water nearby. Please excuse the beeping. That is the electricity in my house being suspicious. For some reason, all the electricity in my home is highly suspicious. So we want to go away. We want to leave that alone. We'll just give that cow time to come by on his own. Again, you don't have to do this. It monster, our, uh, mobs, friendly mobs will eventually spawn over time. But trust me, this is much faster. And in fact, while we're waiting, let's just take a poke over here and see what these guys are up to. How are you guys? Are you all ready to be animated? Possibly next episode? Oh, boy. I think they're... Oh, look at that. The cow was there. The cow was there. That was quick. Fantastic. So we've now got a living animal in our base. We can kill it. We can eat it. I think I actually want to go for another one, though, so that maybe, you know, we can do a bit of breeding and then kill the offspring and then use the dead offspring as clothing. That sounds like a fun time to me. Alrighty, folks, so as you saw there, I decided to go ahead and split it off about halfway. I added an acacia fence gate in the middle here so our buddies can uh, just hang out over here undisturbed, along with the, the nice water fixture here, which just sort of has this nice gap that goes to nowhere. And then back here, I utilized some stone stairs to get this pretty cool little design. A nice little walk path here I'm a fan of. 
Uh, I've got some water as well. The next couple of things we need to do is first off, we need to establish what we're going to plant over there. And also we've got to, well, you know what, let's just figure out where we're, one step at a time here. So seeds, we're going to need more of. Carrots will be useful. Melons, maybe. Pumpkins, maybe. I think, honestly, the only thing I'm interested in planting over there right now is going to probably be sugarcane, because we're going to need some of that. So sugarcane, carrots for food, and then seeds, because we're going to need wheat to breed these cows. And also, while we're over here, though, I should have some more... Here it is, mini charcoal. Let's get all the mini charcoal together. And then first things first, we're going to grab some birch wood. We're not really using it. I like it. We'll probably use it at some point. But we'll go ahead and get that cooking up so we can get some more charcoal. And then we're going to make some mini torches. Now, this is something we looked at last episode. They're called tiny torches. We didn't use any of them, though. I think they're kind of quaint. I think they're fun. So we're going to try to get a few of those. And I think they work just the same as regular torches. And we're, I suppose, about to find out. Because I need to set these out over here. Because, of course, monsters will spawn... Okay, so they can't be placed up there. That was expected. I, I I bet you we could probably place them like here, though. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, I like that. And we'll place them right up here. They are actually so small. You can just place them on every single point, and they don't really stand out that much. Like, they don't stand out like a normal torch would. See, normal torch is huge. Tiny torches, though, they're just so tiny. And like I said, quaint and adorable. It's weird to say a torch is adorable, but it kind of is. So let's tap F7 and figure out where our problem areas are going to be. We'll break these full-size full torches. All right, so that area is fine. This area, though, is going to be the issue. I got to figure out where I'm going to put these where they won't be in the way of the plants. And what we could do is just sort of have them elevated up above. So roll with me on this one. This is going to take a second. It's a bit of a trial and error here. But if we drag this out over here, and then we break all of these pieces, because we definitely don't want those. But then on top of this, we do that. And then we'll do the same over here, because this is where we're actually having issues. Let's see if this works. Okay, tiny torch up top. Eh, it leaves a bit to be desired. Let's take a full-size torch. And we'll see how that does if we do the same thing. And of course, later on, we'll have glowstone. We can just put some glowstone panels up. So that does seem to do a little bit better, but still, it's not great. Of course, the option is always there to just break these pieces off the top and put down a torch. Maybe not a full-size one, though. I mean, if that's not going to take care of everything, we might as well just continue to use the little tiny ones. So the tiny ones definitely don't cover as much area as the larger companions, unfortunately. They do look pretty sweet, though. Hmm. All right. I think I know what we're going to have to do. I imagine if we break this corner piece out and we replace it with one full-size torch. Oh, it's so, so close to taking care of it. We can do the same back here. And again, so close. Hmm. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I just had an idea. Okay, let's do this. Let's put this guy down. And honestly, we should leave one of these over here anyway. We need to have a crafting table over here. So we'll plop it down maybe here. Yeah, that'll be good. That's kind of out of the way. What if we build... Here we go. Cobblestone wall. Follow me. Follow me on this one. Let's let's go ahead and replace these uh, with the acacia. We'll put the acacia back. Okay, so the idea is these won't stand out as much. Like, it kind of placed in between. Ugh, I don't know, though. Yeah, it doesn't really work, does it? Although, you know, it does kind of work. This kind of works. Kind of. Hmm. Alright, so I was struck by a moment of inspiration that led me to creating kind of a mess. But you know what? I regret everything. Just just about everything. Not all of it. Not quite all of it. But pretty darn close. We've got a lot of torches now. Some bigger, some smaller. I like the mini torches still. I think that they look cool, even with the bigger ones in use. And you know what? No monsters are going to spawn over here, and it still looks kind of neat. So I'm... I'm overall very happy with it. I will say this, though. We're going to need at least one more miniature torch. We'll take that one with us.
I've, I've chosen you. Congratulations. You get to represent your kind right there. That needs to be fixed. Cool. All right, and here we are now. We've got this area. This is where the farming is going to happen. Let's go ahead and get to planting. I think we'll go ahead and do seeds over here. I think this is where we're going to need most of our seeds done. Uh, water placement for these water spawns wasn't really something I put a lot of thought into. I just figured, hey, whatever. This will work fine, I guess. I think everything immediately surrounding a water block is going to be a sugar cane because I've got quite a few sugar cane I need to plant and very few water blocks. I forget, though. Do you have to plant them? Yeah, you have to plant them on grass. So that was my mistake over there. Should remember that before I tilled everything up. That's okay, though. This will do just fine. I guess we'll just go ahead and leave all of these as seeds and, and just not worry about it. And then sort of around these, I'm going to plant some carrots. Where did they go, though? There they are. Carrots I like. They're quick. They're easy to eat. And uh, they grow pretty quickly. Awesome. And actually, I think that's all the farming we'll do for today. We've got our two cows here. Soon enough, we'll have more wheat to breed them. Hopefully, we'll get some more sugarcane developed. We're done with this area for now. It's been a good first half of the video. I say half. I don't think we're going to be here that much longer because the last thing we're going to do is ore duplication. And that's not going to take too much time at all. So basically, the way you're going to do this, and in fact, if we just take a look at our achievement book, it even says in the Stone Age that one of the things that you're going to want to do is build, start with Tinker's Construct. And in fact, I think it's a little bit, where is it at? Right there. Make Tinker's Construct smeltery for processing ore. It's very straightforward. It hasn't changed in a very long time. I like this mod, and a lot of time, people get the idea that I don't like it. And the reason is, I've used it so much that when I try to use it, people tend to complain. And be like, oh, so I, you know, I try to avoid it. But I think enough time has passed between the last time I really went in deep with Tinker's Construct and now that it should be safe. So we got to have gravel, sand, and clay. Fortunately, we all know how to do that. And it looks like, ah, this tree is in the way. I was going to say, we're going to need quite a bit of clay. And that means we're going to need quite a lot of water in barrels, which should be easy here if we just get rid of these leaves. There we go. So all of these should fill with water. Fantastic. Except this one. Oh, look at that. Oh, well, that's fantastic. So we've got all the cobblestone in the world now. We should probably consider building a second chest here because you can never have too much cobble. Trust me. You can never have too much cobble. So we'll get that going again. We'll take a stack. We'll take two stacks. We'll take nine. But first, let's get rid of all of this stuff we're carrying around with us. All of these sugar canes and things. And then everything else we'll just dump in here. At least everything else we can fit in here, we will. We're running out of space. Going to have to start looking into storage options here soon. But let's grab... So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I wanted to make sure that we had nine full stacks. There we go. That is not correct. You... How did you... How did you sneak into this? You sneaky slabs. Snicky, snicky. That'll give us 64 compressed cobble, which of course we can use our compressed hammer with? What happened to that? There it is. And it's not a compressed stone hammer, unfortunately, so this will take a little bit longer. But you know what? We don't really need all that much grout. We're not going to build a very big smeltery for today. So uh, this ought to do it, I guess. Cool. All right, so we'll have our stack of gravel. Next up, we're going to need to make a stack of sand, which is pretty easy to do. We're just going to take the cobblestone we've got, and we will make some compressed gravel. Great. This won't give us a whole stack of sand, but good enough. We're going to place all these down. And after this, we'll also need some clay. So I guess we'll just make some more of these. Cool. All right, stack of sand. And then we're going to take the 32 sand we have left. And you know what? We don't really need all that much dust because for every single dust, you actually get four... Uh, where's my regular? There it is. You actually get four pieces of clay. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two. We're gonna need sixty-four of these, so we'll create another line. There we go. That's all the dust that we need. Sixteen dust. Cool. All right. So in order to get the bricks for the seared, well, for the smeltery, that's the recipe. That'll give us a lot of Groot. I am Groot. That'll give us two stacks of Groot, which is pretty decent. Now, oof, the problem is I don't really have all that much charcoal. So we'll go ahead and throw about half of it in here. 
along with, I guess, 16 pieces, and that's going to get underway. In the meantime, I'm going to cut down these trees. We're going to make ourselves some more charcoal. Other things we're going to need is a bit of glass, so I'm going to put uh, just a few pieces of charcoal, mini charcoal in there. This should give us five more pieces of charcoal. We got 13 in there. That'll do it. All right, so we got our first four pieces of seared brick, which will give us, of course, one single seared brick. We might not want to do that just yet, though, because we're going to need the regular bricks for the recipes. We have to build a controller, something to hold the lava in. I'm going to go with a seared tank. Then we're also going to need to build a casting table. We're going to need to build a smeltery drain. And then we're going to have to build the drain faucet, which is very simple. I think that's everything we'll need to get started. And then, of course, just the walls of the thing. Once we've got a small one built, we can just put a stone inside of it. And it will create seared stone, which will create seared stone blocks, which we can then use to expand the size of the smeltery. That there, though, is going to give us more mini charcoal. We don't have to use mini charcoal. I don't even know why I decided to. It was just a decision made on the fly. Three glasses, plenty. Let's go ahead and put the rest of the grout in here. And let's not even bother turning these into little bits because we don't need mini charcoal. Big pieces is fine because we've got a lot of this stuff to cook up. And it is going to... Oh, darn. Well, there goes one of the pieces of glass. Shame. I can take these off the hot bar, though. And I'll wait until this is done, and then you guys can just come back and join me then. Alrighty, so we now have all the bricks we need to build the main component. So first off, we've got the controller. Easy enough, right there. We have got... We're going to need the drain, and then the drain is going to need a faucet in order to operate correctly. So there is that. We'll need to build that tank, which is going to hold the fuel source, which is lava. Which, why I'm thinking about it, we, we might ought to consider actually getting ourselves some more lava because I haven't filled this back up yet. We could put a piece of lava underneath the crucible to make it run faster, but that would also burn everything down. We'll have to build another area for the crucible that's made out of non-flammable materials. So, we've got these three items. So, these are going to be the main items that we need. The last thing we've got to do is just build some more uh, seared bricks, which are going to make up the... Uh, I guess the bulk of this thing, where are we going to put it? I am running out of room on this tiny little island. I hesitate to do any more over here. We could build it just kind of hanging over the edge. I kind of like the idea of that. Maybe just putting it right back over here, I guess? I, I keep coming back to this spot, so I think that this is going to be the area where we put it. So you can build these things. There was a time when it was quite rigid. You had to build it in a very particular way. These days, not so much. You can be very creative with the shape and the overall design and aesthetic. We're going to go a little bit more traditional, though, I think. We're going to build it in the more classical fashion that you might be familiar with. We're going to do a 3x3, three three, maybe. Hmm. Here's the issue I'm running into now because of my own design decisions. I think what we got to do is we got to break these pieces down here because... Oh, gosh. I don't want to... Right now, the way we're going to have to do it, this piece is going to have to sit, like, out here, and that's going to... Eh, this is silly, but it's going to overhang, and it's going to take up too much space on the platform. And when I initially walked over here, I thought it'd be cool to just kind of have it hanging off the edge so it wouldn't be taking up space. Uh, for that to work, we're going to have to have some kind of a block out here, so we'll just go with that. And then, I guess, dead center, we'll go ahead and put the controller. Over to this side, I'm going to put the tank. This is not an important issue. You can put this anywhere you want to. We'll put the drain here, and I guess this block is where we're going to put the table, which I completely neglected to build, but we should have some more stones at this point. We have, looks like, run out, split this here, put a couple more pieces in there. And then that gives us 17 here, so that's going to be two of those, and then we'll have to put a mini in there to finish it off. But, right, let's go ahead and build that table, like so. Excellent. We're going to need that faucet as well. It's getting a little bit cluttered in my inventory, but that's going to go there. Faucet's going to plug in right there. Fantastic. And now we just need to put in the sides of this doohickey. We don't have enough blocks for that, but don't worry. We're working on more even right now as we speak. The corners... Hmm. I don't think we have to have corners, but we might have to have corners, and we'll find out here in just a second. Okay, we're going to need at least one more. That's going to be the minimum. And then possibly, possibly three more. That'll give us two. I mean, it's not like we're going to run out or anything. There's no need to worry. But if it worked... Hey, you do not need corner pieces. If the smeltery catches fire like that, you've done it right. So fantastic. This is ready to go. And the reason we've built a smeltery is because it will double our ore. So you remember us talking 
gold ore pieces. There's eight of them. That'll give us two ore chunks. Two ore chunks should give us two bars. However, we don't have lava yet. If we put them inside of here, it won't give us two, my dear friends. It'll give us four. It'll double. That's, that's what I've been saying. Just gotta wait on the lava. Should have maybe, should have maybe done the lava beforehand, but I didn't. I'm lovable. That's why you guys like me. It's because I'm so, I'm incorrigible. Also, I would recommend building more crucibles at some point so you can get lava more quickly. That's also a good thing to do. Whoa, hey, look at this. Oh, I just noticed we've got a pig and a chicken. Neat. Oh, wow, we've got lots of chickens. So this is one of the other interesting things in Sky Factory 3 is you get all these different kinds of chickens and they drop all these different kind of items, including it looks like we picked up some chicken manure. Mm. As well as, I wasn't paying too close attention, but I think one of them had a sand block out behind it. So this is great. Yeah, sand chicken. We've got a bone white chicken, a log chicken, a chicken chicken. That one's a bit boring. We're going to go into how to breed those and get other really cool items with them at a later date. We're not going to do that today because today we're actually winding things down. And this episode I thought would be shorter than the last one. I certainly hoped that it would. But it looks, I mean, I'm sure the episode itself will be shorter, but it looks like the recording time is going to be about the same. Where are my buckets? There's a hole in my bucket, dear Lysa. A hole in my bucket, a hole. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, we've got our thing of lava. We're going to drop it in there. And that's going to slowly cook up our gold ore chunk. Now, remember, if we smelted these in a furnace, it would give us two. This is going to give us four. And while that's cooking away, the next thing we need to focus on is how to get bars out of this. Because right now, the only way, if we extract anything, we're just going to get like an odd plate. Uh, we could build a basin, I think it's called. Let's make sure it isn't called a casting basin. And that'll give us, if we have nine ingots, it'll give us a block of that ingot, but that takes a little bit longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there. And then once we have, ah, oh, there we go, gold ingots. We're going to right click. It's going to form around that uh, seared brick. And the reason we're using brick to do this mold is because it consumes it. And we wouldn't want it to consume a bar. But now that we have this lovely ingot cast, place that back in there, right click. It's going to fill up and give us our gold. Fantastic. So now we can process all of our ores. We can get twice as many ores out of everything we get. So now I guess it's time to go ahead and start processing some of these. Look at that. Some of these ores we've got sitting around these ore chunks. So that should give us 10 pieces of copper, which is going to come in handy. And folks, that pretty much does it for this episode. Now, again, if you want to watch a mini episode of this, you don't want to watch the full thing, that'll be out here in a couple of days. I'm going to link to the first short speed guide at the end of this video. Next time when we come back, here are the things. Here's your homework. This is what I recommend you do before next episode. This is what I'm going to do before next episode. I'm going to build some more crucibles so that I can get a lot more lava, not only for this, but for another project that we're going to be working on next episode. Also... I would recommend that you start sifting sand. And I mean really step your sand sifting into overdrive. That was a difficult sentence. I'm surprised I got it out. Until next time, though, thank you folks so much for watching. God bless you, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!